Hey there! In this video we will have a look at temporal graph neural networks. These are simply GNNs that can handle graphs that change over time. Temporal graphs occur very naturally in many areas such as social networks or traffic systems. GNNs per se can only handle the spatial information of graphs, but are not able to cope with this additional temporal dimension. That's what temporal GNNs were designed for, sometimes they are also called spatiotemporal or spatial-temporal GNNs. I try to explain the architecture of some of these models and will also provide you with a Google Colab notebook with an implementation for traffic forecasting in the next video. The paper sources can be found in the video description. So I hope you enjoy the following overview and you can always leave a comment if you have further questions. First of all, there are different ways how graphs can change over time, which can be roughly divided into two categories. The first one are simply static graphs that have temporal signals. And signals simply means the information that is received at each time step t. Here we could for instance receive a sequence of different node feature information, which is highlighted by different colors. An example for this category are road networks with sensors that measure different traffic flows every 10 minutes or so. The second category are dynamic graphs with temporal signals. These graphs do not only provide different node or edge information for each step, but might also change the topological structure over time. A classical example is a social network where the users sign in and create new connections to other users and so on. This category can also be seen as a superset of the other one, as every static graph can be modeled as a dynamic graph that simply doesn't change. Generally, for both of these cases, we have a specific timestamp attached to each of the graphs. For the graphs on the left, this timestamp is only relevant for the node and edge features, as this is the only part that can change. So those are indexed with T. For the graphs on the right, we additionally have a timestamp for the topological information, such as the set of nodes or the adjacency matrix. So all elements that define the graph depend on T here. There are many interesting applications of temporal GNNs, so first I wanted to give you a quick insight to some of the current use cases. As already mentioned, they are used in traffic systems for predicting the traffic flow or speed, based on information captured by different sensors. This makes sense because the predictions do not only depend on where the traffic is located, but also how it evolves over time. Another interesting area is motivated by the recent COVID situation and aims to predict the spread of a disease within a country which has both spatial and also temporal aspects. Temporal GNNs can also be utilized in the field of motion detection as a motion can also be represented as a sequence of graphs. The paper MST-GNN uses a spatiotemporal GNN to predict motions like walking, eating or smoking, for example. Finally, applications in electrical or sensor networks can be found in the literature, for example to forecast the solar power in Switzerland. Now it's time to have a look at how these temporal GNNs are implemented. For this I've set up a simple example that should help to understand everything. Let me introduce you to this road network on which we will perform traffic speed forecasting in the next minutes. We also have some traffic signs as well as traffic lights and we of course have some traffic. Typically these traffic systems have sensors such as loop detectors that can measure things like traffic speed or volume. Those are spread all over the place and can be used to model this whole system as a graph. The nodes in this graph are simply the sensors, like illustrated here. There are different strategies to connect them, here we will just build edges according to how the sensors follow the road. So most of the time the sensors are simply connected to the next sensor in their lane and in case of intersections there are several edges between the nodes. Also note that we use directed edges here to incorporate the direction of travel. An alternative way to model traffic networks is to use the streets or segments of streets as nodes and whenever two streets are connected there will also be an edge in the graph. At this point we can also remove all of the other things as we have a full graph representation of the traffic system. At the moment we only have nodes and edges, but of course there are also node and edge features. 
The sensors measure the speed and traffic volume. For this specific node we have a speed of 50 in whatever unit and maybe 120 cars per minute. For another node we have node features 10 and 55. These are the signals for our graph. In addition to the node features we can also include properties on the edges, for instance by calculating the proximity between two sensors. Those two are 2000 meters away from each other, for the ones on the bottom it's only 900 meters. The information however is static in our example because it will not change over time. That's why we will ignore the edge features in the following. Now that we have everything prepared, let's simplify this drawing a bit. This is our initial graph at time step t. More specifically, it's a static graph with temporal signals. Those signals are the different sensor measurements on the nodes. In our example, the only time variant information are therefore the node features. I colored them in different shades of blue to indicate that each sensor measures different information. By the way, later I will also quickly talk about dynamic graphs, so graphs that also change their set of nodes or edges, but let's start with the static variant first. The node features of this first node are called x indexed with n1 at timestamp t. They give us information about the current traffic situation at this specific sensor. In for example 5 minute intervals we now receive new information for each of the nodes and node 1 has now new features called x and 1 at timestamp t plus 1. Here we for example measure a larger volume of cars and a reduced speed. Another 5 minutes later there are even more cars and a lower speed. Here we find information in two dimensions. One is the spatial dimension, so the graph structure that describes which entities are related. The second one is the temporal dimension that tells us how the entities evolved over time. And here it's simply a sequence of sensor measurements. Let's first inspect those dimensions individually. To handle the spatial dimension with machine learning, we already know GNNs that are able to produce great representations of the context of a specific node. For the temporal dimension, which is nothing else but a time series problem, there exist traditional forecasting models like ARIMA, but also deep learning models such as LSTMs or gated recurrent units. What happens if you combine models of those two dimensions? Yes, exactly, a temporal graph neural network results. A spatio-temporal deep learning model is the combination of graph representation learning and time series forecasting. There are many variants of these models out there, but all of them share the same idea. To make it short, you can treat a temporal GNN as a two-step process. First, you calculate the spatial embeddings by sending the graph at each timestamp t through a regular GNN. This can consist of any GNN layer such as graph convolution or graph attention. The embeddings of consecutive layers could for instance be expressed by this formula. The adjacency matrix is multiplied with the previous embeddings and the learnable transformation is applied. Finally, ReLU serves as nonlinear activation. This gives us spatial features that describe the context of each node. I try to make the colors of the node features go from dark to bright to indicate that each node has gathered information about all other nodes. In order to include the temporal information, we need a model that is able to store information over time. You can think of it as a sort of memory. Typical deep learning choices are long short term memory or a gated recurrent unit. These models have a learnable gating mechanism that allows them to store and drop information from a sequence of signals. We can now send the spatial features per node that we calculated in the step before through one of these models. For time step t we have no historical information so far so the embeddings basically stay the same. At t plus 1, however, the temporal model updates the spatial features per node with the historical features. As a result, some of the embeddings additionally hold some properties of the previous time step, which is highlighted in blue here. In time step t plus 2, the temporal model again takes the spatial embeddings created by the GNN and updates them with the information of the previous time step. These final embeddings now successfully combine both the spatial and the temporal information 
in one representation per node. We can use these embeddings now to perform all sorts of predictions. The great thing about this overall architecture is that it is fully differentiable, which means all learnable components can be optimized in an end-to-end -end fashion. When we use a gated recurrent unit as a temporal model, the update formulas look more or less like the following ones. There are two gates, an update gate U and a reset gate R. Those take the inputs of the GNN, so the spatial features, as well as the historical hidden states and apply some learnable transformations. Using these two gates, it's possible to create a new hidden state, HT, which is the combination of the previous one as well as a candidate hidden state. I won't go further into detail around these formulas here, as there are many good resources out there on how these gating mechanisms work. One final remark, it is of course also possible to include the temporal features into the spatial aggregation. So basically to perform message passing on spatio-temporal features. This is something that is also done in some of the papers. Talking about papers, let's have a look at some variants. This is an excerpt from the paper for the library PyTorch Geometric Temporal, which we will also use for the traffic prediction dataset in the next video. As you can see, there are many different types of temporal GNN blocks, and they mainly differ regarding the layers used for temporal and spatial aggregation. TGCN, for instance, uses graph convolutional layers and incorporates the temporal dependence using a gated recurrent unit. At each time step, the graph is fed through both of these modules and the GRU additionally incorporates the information of the previous time step. Just for clarification, this GCN block consists of several GCN layers, for example, eight. This determines how broad the local graph filters on the GNN are. Of course, it's also possible to stack several layers in the GRU block. This will allow the model to learn more complex temporal features. Another very interesting work is called Graph Multi-Attention Network. It deploys the attention mechanism both in the spatial and temporal dimension. The spatial attention simply attends to all of the neighboring nodes. In the context of traffic systems, this allows the model to pay more attention to specific roads or sensors in the network. The temporal attention additionally attends to all of the previous time steps. With this, the model can pay more attention to specific historical events. The previous papers were great examples of temporal GNNs applied on static graphs. Until now, we did not talk about dynamic graphs, however. What do you do if the topological structure of the graph changes? This means edges and nodes can be added or removed from the graph, and the node and edge features might change as well. The paper Temporal Graph Networks, which was published last year, provides a framework to handle the situation. In a sense, it's not much different than the previous ones. We also have a message passing neural network, so basically a GNN, that collects the spatial information for a specific time step. Just like before, there's also a memory module to learn temporal features. In the paper, they experiment with a gated recurrent unit. The main difference to other papers is the following. The neighborhood from which the GNN aggregates the information can be dynamic, so there can be different neighborhoods depending on the time step. Also, the memory module is only updated for the nodes where changes happen. This means if a new node was added or connections to a node change, the new embeddings are used to update the hidden state. In the paper, they also experiment with several message functions and also apply attention. So check it out if you're interested in further details. So that's all for this little introduction to temporal GNNs. Let me know if you found it helpful. In the next video, I will build a simple traffic prediction model using PyTorch Geometric Temporal. I will also quickly talk about the library and how to use it. So see you soon in the next part.